So let's get to the today's theme, which is respiratory insufficiency. And then we're going to continue with ARDS, okay? So respiratory, respiratory insufficiency. If you want, you can call it failure, but, you know, I think it's better to use insufficiency, okay? So, but first question, guys. Before we get to the respiratory insufficiency and its different ways how you can divide it, what is the main sign of respiratory failure or insufficiency? What do you think? What comes up to your mind? Respiratory acidosis. What? Respiratory acidosis, maybe. Well, uh, do you think it's a, you're right, it could be, yeah, maybe I sh should have used the because term. Because the, the kidney compensation is slow. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay, but, but it's going to be a bit later, isn't it? So if it's insufficiency in a way, you know, it starts somehow, it's the, yeah, maybe I was not supposed to use the term signs, signs and symptoms, okay, so out of the symptoms, dyspnea, remember dyspnea, that's the most common sign, which is air hunger, okay, you have this air hunger, you have this feeling of air hunger. So dyspnea is very, it's a crucial term. Although, what, when dyspnea is a very general sign. And actually, there, the problem doesn't have to be, of course, in the, in the lungs. Where, where else the problem could be? There could be something with circulation, okay? So if you're in hypovolemic shock or whatever, yeah, you're going to have air hunger as well, of course. Or if you're going to have anemia, there, you're, there's going to be dyspnea as well, okay? Or if you're going to, like the initial problem is going to be in the left heart failure, okay? Then you're going to have uh, lung edema, of course, then it's a you know, like secondary problem in lung. Or you're going to have dyspnea, which is very typical. So also remember... Like first thing that should pop up to your mind as a symptom or sign, symptom rather, in case of failing left heart is also this now, okay? By the way, what, what is the major symptom in MI? What would you think? What, what first comes up to your mind? Pain. What? Pain. Yes, exactly. Chest pain. Chest pain. Okay, so first you're gonna have a chest pain, and then later it depends how severe it is. So you, I mean, uh, how much the cardiac output decreases, but then you're gonna have you're gonna be dyspneic, so that's the fail already. Okay, but anyways, today we're talking about lungs. So today we mean that the problem is in the lungs, and of course dyspnea is the most like, it's the first thing that should pop up to our mind, like imagining someone having a problem with lungs. Okay. What would be other thing? It's gonna be dyspnea, of course. It's gonna be, it's gonna be faster. So you, you can say tachypnea, okay. And what else? Yes, Leo. Like hyperventilation. Uh, okay, okay. So yeah, tachypnea, hyperventilation depends how, how severe it is. You're right. Professor, maybe bluish, maybe bluish color. Uh, very good. So cyanosis, cyanosis, very good. I'm going to have a mark on cyanosis very soon. So cyanosis is crucial. You know, when do you see cyanosis? What's behind the color? Uh, I think the nose, like around and also specifically for... I'm sorry? Uh, little children for like babies and stuff, you can see it really visually. Once more? Once more? You can see it quite visually in uh, little children because of insufficiency of oxygen. You mean, you mean cyanosis? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're right, of course, but when do you see the cyanosis? The thing you should remember is that, you know, you have some amount of hemoglobin. Normally, you have 100... Hypoxemia. What? Hypoxemia. Okay, so, so, but what makes the color of the blood bluish? When, Professor, when deoxygenated blood, okay. which is like more bluish color than red, it circulates in the skin. Okay. There is no, like... Very good. So, so I didn't hear how it is with oxygen, but I'm sure you're saying it right. It means there is some amount of reduced hemoglobin. That means hemoglobin without oxygen. When hemoglobin... I said it. Yeah, yeah, I think you said it right. So if the amount of hemoglobin without oxygen, that's the reduced one, increases in the blood, then you're having a bluish color. 
And I'm going to have comments on that. But remember, there is a magic number. Well, some books talk about 30 grams per liter, but rather think of 50 grams. That's like per liter. So if there is more, more than 50 grams of liter of reduced hemoglobin, that means hemoglobin without oxygen, not oxygen and hemoglobin, the hemoglobin looks blue. So this turns blood blue and that's why it turns all the tissues where there is this level or more, 50 and more of grams per liter of this reduced hemoglobin, it's going to look blue. Okay, so skin or whatever, wherever. If there is a part of your body when there is more than 50 grams of reduced hemoglobin per liter, it's going to rather look blue. So that's cyanosis. Okay, yeah. So Wait, obviously... More than 50 grams per liter of reduced hemoglobin. Yes. Okay. The one without oxygen. Okay. Yeah. So, and we're going to come back to this, but this is crucial for you. And then you have different types. Then you have a central cyanosis. The problem is going to be where? It's going to be with the oxygenation itself. Okay. Central cyanosis means the that the tongue is blue. Okay. The parts which are just behind the heart in a way that means that central parts are bluish as well and then you're going to have blue periphery as well uh, well depends on the perfusion of the periphery okay and peripheral means rather that the cause is not in the lungs but it's somewhere in the circulatory system where the blood flows slower through the tissue so the tissues have more time to take oxygen and that's why the amount of reduced hemoglobin is going to build up over there. So that's why that's the difference between central and peripheral cyanosis, okay? So if we talk about hypoxias, central cyanosis is typically connected with hypoxic hypoxia. That's what we're going to talk actually about today because the problem is with the oxygenation of blood, so the problem is within lung. And then you can have the peripheral one and the causes, we call it ischemic hypoxia. Okay, or circulatory hypoxia. Okay. So, but but anyway, so, so very good. And then there could be other very unspecific signs, but these are the major ones. Remember, tachypnea, cyanosis, dyspnea, that's the first one. But of course, anxiety, I can put it here, but if you want anxiety, of course, tachycardia, of course. Yeah, that could be a sign, but that's very unspecific but majorly think of first thing that should pop out your name is the dyspnea okay very good so anyways dyspnea is the major one tachypnea obviously cyanosis cyanosis means it's already uh, pretty bad okay so those are signs and symptoms in a way but what about lab what about things you look for as a doctor what would you look if there is a, some problem with respiratory system? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? What would you check? Yeah. Oxygen saturation. Very good. So saturation. That's crucial. So saturation. So it's the saturation of hemoglobin, obviously. And also and, uh, blood gases. Very good. That's what I wanted to hear. So, and we call it Astrup in Europe. In, in the US, it's blood gases. Okay. So, Astrup, that's very important, but still I will have comment on saturation. Yeah. And the thing is, many people look just for saturation. Okay. It means how much the oxygen is bound to hemoglobin. Okay. And... There's one problem with it. If you're checking just saturation, it sort of, it can mask many things, okay? So although a person can have a pretty nice saturation, he can be in big trouble with lungs, okay? Why? Tell me why. Well, to tell you, well, saturation is pretty good factor or parameter to look for if it's decreased because obviously when saturation is decreased it tells you there is a problem okay but the other way there could be normal saturation because 
I mean, the thing you're measuring actually is just the color of the finger, okay? If it's nicely bright red, then you know it's a good saturation. If the color decreases, it's getting worse and worse. But if you would be checking only this, then what can mask the good saturation? Well, it's... Oxide. Okay, so that's one thing. So if you're going to get some supplementation of oxygen, obviously, so you always have to think of that. And we're going to come to this very soon. And also only tachypnea. Because I could still have a normal saturation, but already the patient is breathing faster. So normally he has like 16 breaths per minute, but this guy could breathe 25 per minute. So always with saturation, you always should check at least the breaths per minute, okay? That's crucial. So, and why the breaths per minute are so crucial? Because it's pretty a big load for the organism. It's pretty a big load for the muscles, for diaphragm to breathe so fast, okay? Because it's gonna get fatigued. It's gonna get tired, the muscles, okay? And just to scare you a bit, remember if someone has pneumonia, it's a young person with pneumonia, he comes to you and his breath is like below 22 per minute. It's sort of okay. You can give him antibiotics and he can go home. But if he breathes 30 per minute, you shouldn't let him go because he's going to get very soon tired and he's going to start to hypoventilate and he can die. Okay. So it's crucial to measure the amount of breaths per minute. And the way how you're going to do it is you pretend you're measuring your pulse. Of course, pulse is also important. But you're pretending that you're measuring pulse and you're going to count the amount of breaths. You know, you shouldn't ever tell the patient you're measuring breath because he's going to calm down. So remember, uh, below 22, it's sort of okay. But everything higher, like above 30 or even 40, this is a dangerous situation. And these people could still have a normal saturation. So, so this is very important. Moreover, and if I'm going to get to Astrup now, of course, even better is to take astrup, always to take blood gases. So you can check the saturation like, you know, like first thing you're going to do. Okay, this is going to tell you a bit. But anyways, why the saturation is not so good, why it is better to have the partial pressure of oxygen and CO2? Well, very simple, because if you remember the dissociation curve, remember that? So over here, if I will put... Uh, Partial pressure of oxygen, and here like saturation, okay, here's 100% saturation. You remember that the curve has a such a shape, doesn't it? So basically, if you're just checking saturation, there could be a big difference between, I don't know, 99 and 94, actually, in terms of partial pressure of oxygen. Because over here, up over here, if you look over here, it won't change much, although the partial pressure of oxygen, if we put it like this, let's say, let's say here you got like 40, here you get like 60, and still the saturation could be pretty nice, okay? So small changes in saturation, like there's a big difference when we have 98 saturation and 90, okay? Because if you're having 90, it could be like, you know, it's like 60. Partial pressure of oxygen. Get it? So small differences in percentages in, at the higher levels are big changes in partial pressure of oxygen. And actually the partial pressure of oxygen, that tells you how well the lungs are working. So again, here is sort of a masking. And also remember now when we had COVID and whatever, remember 90 or 92 even, it was sort of a... 90% saturation, that was, or 92, even a bit higher. Uh, it was uh, sort of a, you know, rice finger. Hey, watch out. This guy should go to, to hospital and they should check him out or maybe get a uh, oxygen. And why? Why oxygen again? To slow everything down, okay? That the, the lungs won't, or the diaphragm won't get fatigued. And what else? To slow down the tachycardia because again if it's an older patient what are you afraid of in tachycardia uh, just fatigue himself very quickly i didn't hear you it's uh that he is gonna fatigue 
Fatigue well, and yeah, yeah. Well, that's for with respiration. But what about tachycardia? Why are you are afraid in in all the patient about tachycardia again? It's ischemia. It's heart ischemia. Am I okay again? Because of course, then the muscle needs more perfusion, and if there is some some narrowing of the coronary artery, yeah, he can get ischemic. He can have angina pectoris. He can have attack of angina or even MI, okay? So actually, that is why every time an older person which is dyspneic, which is tachycardia, tachypnea, that's why you give him oxygen to save time, to slow him down, calm him down, and then start to figuring out what's the problem, okay? Yeah? Good? So, but again, back to saturation, remember... Always remember the dissociation curve and that it's masking in the higher percentages. Small changes, like above 90, those are big changes of partial pressure of oxygen, okay? And basically, that's where I am aiming now because if we check the blood gases, when we should use the term insufficiency, okay? And... Of course, you're going to take, guess why I'm talking about the 60 partial pressure of oxygen. This is exactly really the cutoff that if you're below 60 of partial pressure of oxygen, that's already obvious respiratory insufficiency. And guess what? Below 60 corresponds with the saturation O2 of 90%. So this is very alike. Okay, so remember 90 over here, 60 over here, and there's this correlation. Then you have another parameter here with the blood gases. Which one it is? And we're going to talk about it very soon in terms of different carbon types dioxide. of... I'm sorry? Carbon dioxide. Yes, and this one's what's the limit like that you should really start to worry? It's about 50 millimeters of mercury. I'm going to put it here, millimeters of mercury. And still more, there's blood gases, pH. So every time it's below 7.3, this is a dangerous situation. Maybe he's going to need a ventilator, okay, if it's below 7.3. And still common on cyanosis, okay. Because we talked about it in a sec. So cyanosis, remember, and this is ex not exact, but about. I'm going to make it cyanosis. But the assumption is, and this is crucial for you, all of you, please listen. What is the normal amount of hemoglobin in healthy person? 150. 150, exist, or 15 grams uh, per deciliter, but yeah, over here yeah. in Europe, very good, 150 grams per liter. If we have normal levels of hemoglobin, then remember, this sort of is going to correspond to, and I told you the limit 30, some some books talk about 30 grams, but let, let's, let's keep it 50 grams per liter or more, you're going to have cyanosis. So remember about, this is not exact, but this corresponds with saturation of like below 85. That's what they say, or below 80, obviously. If it's going to be below 80, obviously. So over here with this saturation, and look at that, 80, and I'm going to check the table over here. 80 saturation corresponds with like 46 stores, like 46. Anemia? So for wait 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 so so forty oh, over here forty six I'm sorry, so when you're gonna have eighty this is you you should expect the patient could be cyanotic over here cyanosis, if you have normal amount of hemoglobin if you have hundred fifty and eighty percent of it is desaturated it makes you about the fifty, well yeah it's sort of, remember about below eighty five or eighty there's going to be cyanosis, okay? So it's another way how to look at it. It's through the saturation. So he's going to look bluish. And of course, if you're going to see someone's turning blue centrally, he's in a big danger, okay? So that's even more serious insufficiency.
respiratory insufficiency. Okay? But remember, please, the magical number, and rather remember 50 grams per liter and more of reduced hemoglobin. So if you're going to have 100 of reduced, well, uh, that's going to be like... <laughs> very deadly I guess but anyways you definitely would look cyanotic and I heard anemia over here and that's why I am stressing so much this please remember would you expect person with anemia to have cyanosis is it probable no no never mention cyanosis yeah but but watch out no Remember, no. If someone has anemia, the thing is, you know, like serious anemia, it's like 50 grams per liter. Like I, I'm having only 50 grams per liter of hemoglobin. That's it. Okay. So to, it's impossible that I would have like all of it without oxygen. Okay. Get it? If I yeah, just the situation of it will be. It will be okay, the situation. Uh, no, no, no. It's like you have so low uh, amount of anemia that the probability that you're going to have 50 grams of unsaturated hemoglobin, it's impossible. Okay, watch out. The saturation is going to be very similar. If you're just having low partial pressure of oxygen, it's going to be decreased, of course. But you won't ever fulfill the amount, like absolute numbers, like 50 grams. So remember... Uh, someone with anemia is going to be pale. They're pale. Okay, they're not cyanotic. On contrary, if someone has the opposite in a way, it's pathology, obviously, you know, the polycythemia vera. It, this is more towards cancer, okay? But if you have high levels of hemoglobin, like if you have 180, 200, of course they will look cyanotic, okay? Yeah? They will look cyanotic, but they won't have any, they don't have to have dyspnea at all. Lance Armstrong, you know, like all the cyclists. So it's like being Lance Armstrong on EPO. They have another risk. They have a risk of thrombosis and many other things. Uh, I mean, it's harder for heart to pump the oilish. We could say it's more oil than, than water, the, the blood, but it, it's fine with breathing totally. Okay. So, and they, they, will, they can be cyanotic very easily they'll be feeling fine compared to the ones with anemia. They will be definitely dyspneic, the ones with anemia, okay? Although pale. Okay, so when you're thinking of cyanosis, please always think of the total level of hemoglobin. And these numbers as, or these percentages, the 80%, 85, you have to assume over here, that he has normal levels of hemoglobin, which is 150, okay? Good? So, those are the, let's say, parameters you look for. Remember the, also the decreased pH, that's, that's very important, okay? And now let's get to the one more thing that you mentioned already, and this was crucial. And that was the supplementation of oxygen, okay? So... Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.